about a lifestyle change that can boost your health and wellness? Intermittent fasting might be the solution you've been looking for. On today's show, Layla Brook tells us more about it and its potential benefits. So when we refer to fasting, obviously you get religious fasting, which is usually obviously for religious purposes. But when we're looking at it from a health or a weight loss point of view, we're usually referring to intermittent fasting, which would imply that it's a period of time where you are not eating, whether it's for a few hours. Some people do maybe once a day that they eat. And then obviously then they would eat during those allocated hours that they are allowed to have. Certainly, there has been some research which has found that intermittent fasting can be beneficial from the point of view of reducing inflammation, um, and as well as from a weight loss point of view, and as well as from overall health and longevity. However, there are, obviously, it's very hard to have very long-term studies on this because there isn't necessarily much evidence from that point of view, but certainly there are some potential health benefits that have come about. So specifically, that's been found that in terms of, for example, reducing the risk of um, cancer, in terms of diabetes risk or diabetes management, that there is some potential benefit. However, from a weight loss point of view, there are mixed results. So what I find um, was intermittent fasting is very, very popular at the moment. And certainly I get asked about it on a daily basis. It used to be that I was asked about veganism on a daily basis. That was very popular and banting also and keto is still popular, but certainly intermittent fasting is having its moment. So I think it's sort of almost become due to the whole sort of keto and banting sort of fad slash phase slash lifestyle for those people who follow it in that way. Um, it's sort of an offshoot of that. But in terms of the sort of popularity of it, I think a lot of people like the idea that they can sort of eat whatever they want to an extent. However, what I find is that those people who do do intermittent fasting, so let's just say at the most basic level, which would be not eating breakfast basically, and then maybe eating from say 12 o'clock onwards. I find in the case of those sorts of people that what they often find is in the beginning, they tend to have good results. They tend to find that they are losing weight quite effectively. They find that it's working for them. However, what tends to happen then after that initial period of time is either their weight loss starts to plateau or even what lands up happening is that either they end up plateauing, they start to actually regain weight. And a big reason for that is that firstly, they haven't necessarily made any long-term changes to their diet. They haven't actually tried to eat better, they aren't necessarily eating healthier. All that they're doing really is they are cutting out breakfast. So in terms of the calories for the rest of the day in terms of the actual nutritional balance that hasn't necessarily improved. So what lands up happening then is there's a mindset of, oh, well, I haven't had breakfast. That means I can get away with an extra pastry or whatever it may be later in the day. So they don't necessarily have the calorie deficit that's required to lose weight in the long term in terms of that. And they land up then slowly regaining weight um, or, as I say, plateauing. So there's a lot of other issues that come into the intermittent fasting in terms of the practicality and the safety of it um, and the effectiveness that aren't always so straightforward. So that's why it doesn't always work for everybody. So I find that it is sustainable or more effective for those people who are not breakfast people. So if you're the kind of person who breakfast is not a priority for you, then that's fine and it can work for you, rather than forcing yourself to eat breakfast if you're not into that. However, if you're one of those people that you can't get through the day without breakfast, I know I'm one of those people, um, then it would not work for you. But I wouldn't recommend it to everybody unnecessarily. Um, and also there's ways to do intermittent fasting without having to do intermittent fasting. Instead of having to do, say, a 16-hour fast with an 8-hour sort of eating window, you can also do a um, sort of different option or an alternative where essentially you are doing sort of like um, you're keeping your meals within a 10 to 12 hour period. So if you, for example, eat breakfast at 7 and you're eating finishing eating dinner by seven, then that's at least 12 hours where you're not eating. So that also forms a kind of version of intermittent fasting because you're still creating a break of not eating. Um, and also you can do a, another form of a modified um, fasting where say a couple of nights a week, you only have vegetables for dinner. So you also are once again creating a period of time where you're not having say the protein and the carbs to the extent which it would sort of affect the fasting period. This is worth trying, you know, it won't do any harm if you if it doesn't work for you and also for someone who say is concerned about sort of longevity or health risk 
um, maybe they've got a family history, say, for example, of diabetes, whatever it may be, and they want to sort of lower their risk. That's something also that could be considered. However, even that doesn't need to be something that's an everyday thing. So if you were wanting to do intermittent fasting, uh, firstly, it's important to look at why you want to do it. So if you want to do it because all your friends are doing it, usually not a good enough reason. So it's important to do it for the right reasons, which means that either it is for health reasons or it's for weight loss reasons, if really other things haven't worked for you. And once again, making sure that it works for you from the point of view of that if you are the kind of person who desperately needs breakfast and can't get through the day without breakfast, you might struggle. So assuming you are the right person for it, um, then you need to decide on what makes most sense to you in terms of the um, sort of hours. So whether you want to do, for example, a 16-8 fast where you would only eat for eight hours a day, whether you want to do maybe say a 12 hour fast, like I mentioned, where you would say only eat, say, say 12 hours a day and other 12 hours a day or 10, 12 hours a day, you'd be eating, but the rest you're not. So it's a case of deciding what makes most sense from that time point of view. But then at the same time, thinking about what you're actually going to eat when you do want to eat. And I think that's what a lot of people ignore. So they think, oh, well, that's fine. You know, I'm not eating for the rest of the time, so I might as well just sort of do whatever. But you have to make sure that it's still balanced in terms of the rest of the day. So you sort of make sure that you're having enough protein, enough carbs, enough fat, enough fruits and vegetables, etc. So they're still balanced to the day. It's not just about just doing whatever you want, essentially, for that time.